Hey, I am Kalia Vlivyaki and I am your design journey art class expert for drawing with watercolors and inks while creating illustrations and paintings inspired by nature and everything around us. In this session number two, we are moving forward together and getting into more depth on how to create ink illustrations using the Stadler pigment liners. And we're going to learn how to create line shading and also focus more on our sketching speed, line width and variations to create depth. And finally, we're going to have fun and actually add a metallic touch to our final challenge and give a contrasting element to our painting. The materials we're going to use are the pigment liners from the Stadler Design Journey assortment that you can find in this set of three, including two metallic markers in gold and silver for our final step. The marker nibs we've included in this set are 0 0.1, 0 0.2 that are very fitting for everything we're about to create and this unique wider angle nib but you can always find everything individually and even add a 0.7 for a better line width range. Of course, to follow up all the exercises and prepare our sketches, we're going to use a pencil, an eraser and sharpener and this set has you covered including everything and lastly the compass. Once again, the paper I'm going to use is an A5 size and 220 GSM. Creating line shading with pigment liners first of all starts on how you hold your ink pen. You need to have a slight angle and have a soft grip that will allow you to move your fingers quickly and freely. Most of the work is done by the hand and not the wrist in order to concentrate your line in the desired area. Now, the bigger the tilt of the pen is, the less ink the liner will leave on the paper since the tip of the nib is not touching as much not letting the ink flow. This can be really useful in creating darker or lighter lines with the same pigment liner. The darkest being when we hold the pen vertically and the whole width of the nib can touch the paper and the lighter thinnest when we use tilt. Now, as we also saw with dot shading, the density of your lines plays a huge role. The more close together the lines are, the darker the result, so we have a darker suggestion of shadows and less light. Creating these value boxes once more helps us understand what we can do with our lines and test out what we like in a smaller scale before we start on our illustrations. It's always nice to do some warm-up and get your flow going. Also, it's quite important to mention that this time being consistent in density is not something we're looking for. Actually, the variation of darker spots and then lighter and changing between them will give extra texture and detail and make the illustration even more beautiful. Especially when we are drawing nature motifs, this technique increases the more natural look and gives movement to our subject. I'm going to use a leaf shape as an example since it's easy enough to create as a shape and guideline but perfect to showcase everything that we mentioned. Sometimes not even finishing our lines and being fast enough for the pen to just start strong but then leave the paper softly and create a beautiful gradient line. One more element that I think always works great with this technique is having a strong outline of the shaded area. Quick shading lines can sometimes have a messy border since we can't always control perfectly our placement. So having a smooth line work of our illustration can work as a border to have a cleaner end result. It's always nicer, in my opinion, to use a bigger nib width from what you're using for shading to create contrast. In this case, you don't have to rush your work, take your time and use the nib pen to its fullest width by holding it more vertically so you can have a beautiful dark consistent line. The pigment liners from Stadler Design Journey Assortment are perfect since they can hold their nib body firmly and they have so many width variations that you can find exactly what you're looking for. Also, the ink flows great every time, having no trust issues, delivering always super dark, smudge and waterproof lines.
Now that we have all the information down about how to use Illustrate and save using the pigment liners, you have everything you need to start your journey challenge. So while having fun and following the next steps, you will end up with a beautiful floral piece that you will be so, so proud of. To start our drawing and to make sure it is easy to follow, after marking the center of the page with the symmetry ruler, I'm going to use the compass to create two circles as the center and placement of the base flower bodies. As you can see, I make sure my circle has a radius of 3 cm. I first place it on the center to mark a spot 3 cm as far as the radius away from the center and on the left top area. And then from the spot I marked, I draw a circle that also touches the center. Then making my radius smaller, so this time it is 2 cm, I then make a smaller circle inside our bigger one we just did. But make sure they are touching, it is a lot easier to see what I'm trying to explain with words. Then once again I lower my radius to 1.5 cm and doing exactly the same but this time on the other side. Having in the end three circles one side the other and each time the smaller one is touching the previous one on the opposite side. Oh, and I also forgot to add one more slightly bigger than the second one. All this makes a lot more sense when you look at it, I promise. Doing the exact same thing one more time for the other flower, but this time my circles are looking in a diagonal to the right. So this flower is a bit rotated to the right, while our top flower is a bit rotated to the left. So we have a bit more unique look and more interesting details on our illustration. And now we are ready to start drawing the flower petals. The middle small circle is the heart of each flower. Use the size and direction of the space of each circle to guide you on the direction and size of your petals. Making the last ones the bigger one looking up front and out, giving the open bloom effect. Repeating on the other flower but keeping in mind this is rotated looking on the right. Last but not least adding leaves on the background to fill the area and connect these two flowers in a flowy design while also adding our metallic moon. Now using our pigment liners we trace over all the sketch lines we made and then clean everything with an eraser. Starting to shade our flowers, I had one main thought in mind. Doing all the quick sketch line shading we saw in the technique explanation and keeping the inner petal parts darker since this is where all the petals connect to the center of the flower.
For the leaves, I made sure my pointy ends were darker for a more unique contrast and result. Kept repeating till all my leaves and petals are shaded, and of course to finish off our art piece and make it stand out, I used the metallic silver to fill in the moon and, oh boy, it looks so so beautiful. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and I would love to see your recreations and all those cool looking moons you have made so make sure to share them with me on Instagram using the hashtag MyDesignJourney. Thank you so so much for being here and following this design journey that it is truly all about finding inspiration in nature and everything around us. Thank you.